You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for May 31st, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, your Midwest home for quasi-Stalinist demands for apologies. It's the professional left with Trip Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Trip Glass. Hey, you know those birds? I, you hear them? I hear them. It's a beautiful yeah. day here in Springfield. We're we're doing fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, we usually don't have weather like this where it's just pleasant to be outside. It's either no. usually too humid or too cold. Or too but, rainy. Uh, or too rainy. We <laughs> yeah. have, we've had a lot of rain like everyone else in the Midwest. And mm-hmm. we're certainly, our thoughts are with people dealing with flooding. Uh, Drift Class, what is this thing about quasi-Stalinist demands for apologies? Yeah, apparently Bill Crystal decided that any attempt to make him apologize for anything he has ever done is a quasi-Stalinist move on the part of us liberals. <laughs> and he's not going to stand for it. Oh, I think Bernie God. Sanders leveled a request to him it's, uh, about apologizing for his, you know, un- unforgivable and indefensible uh, position on the Iraq war. And Bill Crystal, mm-hmm. who, you know, is never going to get fired and there's no consequence to anything he ever does ever, because that's the way the media works now, just said, fuck you. I'm not going to ever apologize for anything. Let's meet and have a debate about it and raise my <laughs> ratings. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Bill Crystal. I don't want to debate you. I want to destroy your politics forever. Now, right? I would like to mention um, in, a, in, a, in a nice way, The Intercept, who did a good public service this oh. week, because they put together Bill Crystal's actual comments back in 2003 when he was urging the country to invade the wrong country. And so Bill Crystal at the time was saying, this is a moral choice. And, you know, I don't think I'll be wrong, but if I am, I sh- certainly should be held to account to account for my words. Uh-huh. I sh- certainly should be held to some standards. And I got to figure he said that knowing that that will never happen. Bill Crystal belongs to a group of journalists for whom there is never going to be any accountability. Yeah. And everyone who works with Bill Crystal knows this. And no one who works with Bill Crystal says this. And that is the glaring silence at the heart of journalism that no one who works inside a corporate media universe dares to talk about. Except it shouts so loudly to the rest of us that it's all we can think about. Like we look at these people who are manifestly unfit to be in the public discourse based on their own record, who are constantly being shoved down our throats. At some point, the fact of their immunity from accountability becomes the story. There is absolutely no accountability for a handful of people near the top of the system. Um, And that was manifested this week most clearly by Dean Baquette. Of the New York fucking Times. At the New York Times. I I do know that um, Marty Barron over at the Washington Post is laughing his ass (laughs) off because Dean Baquette apparently lives in fear of Nazis egging his house. He is now instituting a policy of not having times people go on any programs on cable news that he considers partisan or controversial. So he's he is equating the Rachel Maddow show with Hannity. Yes, with, yeah. with the Sean Hannity show. They're both yeah. very controversial. They're both very, very, you know, they're both partisan. Blue they both have positions, points of view. And we at the New York Times proudly take no position but on they're anything. willing to go and, and have their toes licked on Brian Williams' show. Oh, yeah. When you, I, I have told this story before about one of the um, um, high people at Columbia College, one of the people way up the ladder at Columbia College, and who had it written into the school rules that, of course, you can't smoke or drink or hang out with co-eds uh, or underclassmen um, if you're a member of the faculty on campus, except in his <laughs> office. <laughs> and, and he had this weird little exception written into the rules, and everyone sort of walked around it and pretended it wasn't fair, pretended they, and, and no, it was because this one guy wanted to be able to get drunk with young girls and smoke Smoke in his office, whatever he wanted in his fucking office. That's what he wanted to do. And the school rules said you can't do that, but he, that was not sufficient for him. And he had enough authority to just make a loophole for himself. And that's what you can see happening at the times. And everyone knew it. 
And everyone knew that's why it's there. So it's these very obvious ruptures in mm -hmm. their ethical culture where that they don't follow their own rules. They don't actually follow through on their own promises uh, that you can, you can reverse engineer who they're afraid of and how afraid of them they are. And clearly the New York times is fucking terrified of having Fox news come to the build their building and burn it down. Right. Right. So they are willing to sell any principle uh, for pennies on the dollar for a little peace of mind. And they are so desperate to become a architectural manifestation of David Brooks. That, you know, the, the, someone who will go a thousand miles to find a fence to straddle. I don't want to offend anyone. And if, some, if the Republicans do something horrifying, it's vitally important that we blame both sides. That, that's their institutional culture now. And um, well, and Jay we should Rosen, talk about, go ahead and talk about Jay Rosen. I also want to talk about Maggie Hammerman yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Jay Rosen had a wonderful tearing that thing down brick by brick today on Twitter. But he, he said uh, that who would want to work in a place governed by this philosophy? Right. Right. Uh, what sort of sort what sort of serious legitimate person who's interested in policy, politics who would ever want to work in a place like that? But then I look over at the Tribune media and Gatehouse media. I said, well, dude, you know the peak journalism numbers were in the '90s about seventy thousand, eighty thousand jobs in journalism, and now even though there's no actual nose count, it's like twenty thousand. Maybe the reason they put up with it is there's no work for them anywhere else. Right. Yeah that they couldn't find the job anywhere else. I mean, we're watching our local paper here just be, you know, sacrificed one, you know, one piece of furniture at a time. Absolute bloodletting. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, and, and today the Tribune announced that it's giving, you know, special cash dividends to shareholders. Right. You know, because they're just looting the place. This is just, they're doing to the media, to the fourth estate, what they did to the banks, which is we're going to fucking loot the place. We're all going to get our bonuses. We're going to make everyone's life miserable. And we're going to walk away and leave someone else to clean up our mess. The problem is in banks, you can kind of say, here's the, how we'll fix the institution. Here's what we'll do. We didn't do it, but you can sort of see how you might fix that kind of institution. In journalism, the institution you depend on to tell you the truth about what's going on in the world is the very institution that's being destroyed. Mm -hmm. So there is no free press to tell you what's wrong with the press. And you can just watch this thing fall apart. So you get these these inbred, cocktail party raised um, creatures of Washington and creatures of New York who never leave their bubble, right. who are only interested in not offending anyone and not pissing off the advertisers or shareholders. And, and, and are yet, more than willing to circle the wagons to protect one of their own, but yes. not willing to circle the wagons to protect our democracy. I'm just going to say it. That's we'll talk about it. Maggie Haberman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she she is an access journalist. Uh, she uh, has done some good reporting. She has also yep. done some very, very bad reporting. And the latest uh, of her example of her bad reporting was her Hope Hicks article. Oh, God. Which... Yeah. Featured And, you know, I, it's hard to know what control Maggie Haberman has over which images selected to go with her article. Uh, headlines are always written by someone else. You know, that is just flat out. Sometimes the lead is written by an editor as well. I mean, this uh -huh. is how things go, at, even down at Crooks and Liars. It doesn't. It isn't just at the well-funded <laughs> New York Times. We editors often select the image that goes with a post and rewrite the title and rewrite the lead and the tweet and so forth. So the author of the piece isn't necessarily doing all of that. But Maggie Haberman's article basically made responding to a congressional subpoena into a lifestyle choice over yeah. high heels or flats. You know what? What is mm -hmm. Hope Hicks going to do? How is she going to model her image? Is she going to be a cooperator right. or a staunch defender of her former boss? And then they had this glamour shot of her because she's a former model, making her look like she's. Hmm, I'm picking out what scent goes best with obstruction of justice. Maggie Haberman got raked over the coals on Twitter, uh, which is not mm -hmm. America. Twitter is not America. Right. Uh, but it's also not uncommon because she does this sort of shit a she lot. She does this a lot. And Twitter is where the media goes to read about itself. So right. as a result of sort of the raking that she got over this article, uh, a number of people with blue check marks 
and uh-huh. uh, media paychecks came to the defense of Maggie Haberman. Mm-hmm. Andrea Mitchell <laughs> had had one of the worst takes in that she said, if both sides are going after you, Maggie, then you must be doing something right. That is the worst both siderism imaginable. And it's something that it is a lie that the mainstream media tells itself all the time. Oh, yeah. If if all sides are coming at you, you know you're doing the right thing. You're right down the middle there. And no, no. I, I find it somewhat encouraging that there were all the you know, all the usual um, establishment defenders, Brian Stelter, maybe people like that, who were just habitually in charge of making sure that no one challenges the hegemony of the Beltway media. All circled their wagons and every one of them, when they popped up, just got wham by a whole bunch of people on Twitter who are not blue check marks, but who aren't bots either. Right. Like, fuck you, we're not going to put up with this anymore. We're not going to have this conversation anymore. You are not going to tell us what's important and what's not and who gets to and, and who gets to be the framer of the conversation anymore. Answering a subpoena is not a goddamn lifestyle choice. Right. And how far up right. Trump's ass do you have to be that you think that way? And you frame the story that way. And how desperate are you for access to the White House that you just sort of shrug that a whole um, framing off as necessary to get yourself inside the Oval Office to get the scoop? Well, it was Jonathan Chait at New York Magazine. Oh, yeah. Who said? Yeah. Who initially said, you know, of course Trump hates Maggie Haberman. Why does the left? You know, it's right. both sides hating her. Da, 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 da. And granted... Maggie Haberman's reporting has exposed a lot of Trump wrongdoing and good for her. Yes. But then there are moments and times when she fucks up and right. uh, she has a lot of power writing for the New York Times. So we are going to hold her accountable for that because she gets a paycheck to do her job. And uh, it was Oliver Willis who said mainstream reporters have shown more concern for Maggie Haberman uh-huh. than for families affected at the border tr- or the travel bans or the transgender ban, because this criticism happened on Twitter by somebody they care about. They all know that they must hang together or they shall surely all hang separately, which is why they will always rush to each other's common defense, which is why they're a joke, which is why they've just, how, this is how they've destroyed their profession. Um, you know, hearing, Joe Scarborough railing about deficits <laughs> and this is Republican party. I knew and having this stupid back and forth about deficits and it's, it's X number of trillions of dollars and who will do it. And there's no responsible on people on the right, but what about the left? And I just keep quoting back to him on Twitter, Dick Cheney. Yeah. Ronald Reagan said deficits don't matter. Ronald Reagan showed us deficits don't matter. This that's your fucking party, Joe. Yep. That's yeah. been your party for your entire fucking adult life. So keep the D word out of your fucking mouth. Right. Because now you've got a budget director who's saying nobody cares about the deficit. Right. We don't even have to mention it. Right. What did you think was going to happen when every Republican president has run on being a deficit hawk and then every Republican president has blown the deficit up because they want to kill social programs? Right. And you right. can't get people to vote those social programs out of existence. So you just have to starve them. Of revenue. That's your party, Joe. So, Drip Glass, we're, we need to change gears. I just, one one final note on that media thing is the math that we did this week yes, with each yes. other of this uh-huh. being a 70-30 nation stuck with a 50-50 media that yeah. constantly pushes things to the right to make it 50-50. Yeah. And we found that out uh, again this week with more abortion bills passing and uh, an abortion decision uh, in at the Supreme Court in uh, a mixed bag, uh, they upheld the Supreme Court upheld the Seventh Circuit's restriction on Indiana's abortion law, mm-hmm. but upheld their right to legislate the disposal of fetal waste. Ruth Bader Ginsburg pointed out the law was pretty stupid because <laughs> um, they created a hurdle and more work for abortion providers that they have to bury or incinerate. But if the woman wants to take the fetus home with her, there's no restriction whatsoever as to what she does with it. Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, you know, if you are really concerned about the sanctity of this tissue, Mm -hmm. uh, allowing someone to just take it home in a jar and stick it in her fridge or do whatever they want to with it, uh, doesn't quite meet up to any sanitary or health concerns, or <laughs> it makes no sense. But 
Uh, yeah, if it's if it's outside a woman's body, it's medical waste. Right. If it's inside a woman's body, it's it's protected by law, and she will be strapped to a table and forced to carry that child. Right, right. Um, but the interesting thing to me about that, and I'm I'm so grateful that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is still on the court to to call out these jackasses on the right. Uh-huh. The fact that they refuse to hear anything about the Seventh Circuit's decision on actual abortion. And uh, it was Clarence Thomas who had a fit about that and said, since we decided Roe, we are honor bound to continue to consider abortion cases and and outline what abortions are OK and which ones aren't. No, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> they're not re- obligated to do anything. And it's it's interesting to me. It will be interesting to me to see how this works out if the lower courts just continually as they have done start smacking down these laws and saying no this is unconstitutional it's unconstitutional all of these uh legislators and legislatures are hoping to get to the supreme court what if they never Mm -hmm. get to the supreme court what if the court just says no you know the lower court's ruling stands and what if brett kavanaugh could just decide uh we're not going to, I don't want to hear any of these cases if they're decided in favor of Roe and he's not on the record for, for denying mm-hmm. anything. I, it'll be interesting to see what happens. That's an, that's an uncompleted sentence. You know, we're, we're obliged, you know, we're morally obliged. We're obligated, ob- obligated to who exactly? Oh, you mean your wife's, the people that fund yeah, your, your wife's, wife's fucking <laughs> right wing organization. Yeah. You're the lobbyists yeah. who keep the yeah. food on your table and your wife out of your hair and your wing nut base that would, you know, come after you hammer and tongs if you ever opened your mouth and said anything other than overturn row, overturn row. And, uh, and Tony Scalia was like the nicest, kindest, bravest <laughs> man I've ever met. You know, the idea of a manifestly incompetent and unqualified asshole being put on the court is not a new thing. It's something Republicans do all the time. And so the idea, I'm glad that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is there. And if, if people keep throwing these things to the court and the court keeps rejecting them, what are they going to do? They're going to wait. So we we make fun of wait. Clarence Thomas, but let me tell you something that's scary. His uh-huh. law clerks wind up being federal judges. That's a bad thing that's happening. Yeah. They have poisoned yep. all the, the groundwater is already yeah. poisoned. FYI, this is like the discussion about climate change. What happens when it arrives? It's yeah. here. It's already here. The the nine hundred tornadoes are here. The the ocean levels, the political ocean levels rising so that we drown the coasts. Is here. They're moving. The they're moving thing. the capital of Indonesia. They're moving the capital yeah. because it's going to be underwater yeah. soon. So the 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 horrible bad thing the Republican Party was heading for all these years isn't happening in the future. It's happening yeah. now. It already happened with the Bush administration. Yeah. It happened when Obama was president. It's happening real time all around you right now. And so if you're waiting, this is the part. This this cartoon in the uh, Tribune today with, with the giant howitzer and acres of of shells in every direction all stacked up neatly and a a donkey shoving ready to shove a shell in to the to the cannon labeled impeachment and there's a cartoon nancy pelosi going wait we need more ammunition no the republican party stands um tried and convicted of being a manifest existential threat to this country and has been so for decades anyone who pretends otherwise is a bad guy. Anyone who wants to continue the discussion is an idiot. Anyone who continues to pretend, you know, what we need to do is is hold each other's hands out and across the aisle and wait for Mitch McConnell to, you know, have some sort of um, uh, bolt from the blue and he starts becoming a human being and stops becoming a monster. Those people are are not your friends. <laughs> those people are not doing those things to save you or help you. They're doing the, it to postpone, to sandbag around their own house. All they want to do is be left alone by the fascists until they die comfortably. That's all they want. Only thing the New York Times wants, the only thing Dean Beckett wants is to get through his career without ending up in front of a, a kangaroo trial at a hearing of racial and ethnic and journalistic impurity yeah. headed by headed by i don't know mitch mcconnell or or 
somebody. Lewandowski, because um, he's promised one. Yeah, Corey Corey Lewandowski. Lewandowski's promised that there's going to be show trials. Sure, sure. They're 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 really that's all they care about. They don't give a shit about you or your family or the Midwest or anything. They care only at this point about saving mm-hmm. what's theirs. And that's so they're sandbagging around their own little estates and their own little privileges and their own little parts of the world. And the rest of us can fucking drown. Yep. Well, I'm not going to drown. I'm not going to put up with that. But I'm also not going to pretend that these these blandishments, these this bullshit coming from those little sandbag um, fortresses far, far away from me. They have nothing to do with my life. They're as far away from me as if they were on the moon. Have anything to do with the media or the First Amendment or the free press or the good of this country. There are corporations looking out yep. for their interests. And speaking of corporations looking out for their interests... Uh-huh. Netflix, <laughs> yeah, Disney, and Warner are all three reconsidering Georgia as a location to do business. <laughs> and there are were a number of people at a Crooks and Liars comment thread on this story saying they should leave Georgia now. Don't yeah. wait. But the yeah. fact is, if you wait until the courts have made a decision about that, you have much more influence uh, mm-hmm. as to what the legislature does as a result of any court decision. So you do want it to be a threat, not just go. I understand the the impetus to just say, no, abandon Georgia, abandon Mm -hmm. these states. But uh, no, it's it's better off that they should simply hang that over the uh, Bureau of Tourism and Economic Development uh, people of Georgia. Uh, Which brings us to a new fake sponsor we have. Yes, if... If that fails, and I do want to uh, bring up some good news that, that happened literally this afternoon. We're recording this on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, and Judge Michael F. Stelzer of the uh, Missouri Circuit Court in St. Louis uh, on Thursday, um, he granted uh, the last clinic in Missouri a temporary restraining order Friday afternoon, allowing it to keep operating past midnight. Mm-hmm. This is not save it forever. It doesn't even, I don't know if it, if, it, if it even saves it for a month, but it does put off its execution as of today. Right. So that it would so, not be, uh, Missouri would not have zero abortion providers, right? Yes. This is the literally the last abortion provider uh, in the state of Missouri, which is right next door to us. Um, and again, I, I'm taking my good news where I can find it these days. However, it, we would like to welcome a brand new sponsor that's taking the transportation and logistics world by storm, Blue Gal. Uh, We are, of course, talking about pro-choice moving and storage. Now, do you live in a part of the country that is quickly turning into a third world theocracy? Do you run a major film or television production company that might make movies about medieval hell holes, but has no interest in working in a state that actually is one? Then contact the good people at pro-choice moving and storage to help you blow town with the minimum of fuss. Would you like to hear the jingle, Blue Guy? Sure. Or would you like me to sing the jingle? Would you sing the jingle? You sing so much better than I talk. (laughs) Row, row, row your boat and get the hell away. Merrily, 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 merrily. We're pro-choice and (laughs) (laughs) pro-gay. Pro-choice moving in storage because there's no reason to make movies in states where women are treated as second-class citizens. Amen to that. Amen to that, brothers and sisters. Amen to that. Amen to that. We're going to talk a bit about uh, McCain's story. Yeah. uh, and, Yeah. And how nutty it is that... The people around Trump are so aware of his insanity that without apparently any prompting from him or anyone uh, in the higher command, oh, no, no, we don't want to have John McCain's name on the side of a boat where Donald Trump is. It might yes. make him upset. Well, and it's, it's named after John McCain's father. And grandfather. So yeah. grandfather. I'm right. sorry. Uh, so both. It's, it's both. Not... No, both. Yeah. Father and both. grandfather. So, but it's yeah. any, any of the M word anywhere yeah. will make him shit himself and run in circles. <laughs> so let's make sure... It... And let's so let's do it, uh, David Copperfield, and just you know, make it disappear mm-hmm. as if by magic, make mm-hmm. an entire aircraft carrier disappear, and all the people on it just disappear, gone like that. Um, and uh, I forget who said this last night, but this was an actual, uh, I think it was the Chris Hayes show. Yes, this was a a, tr- a really perfect example of how collusion really yep. works. Yeah, Sam Cedar was talking about that. That's him. Yeah, I believe it was Sam Cedar who, who had a lot of good insights last night. Um, this is the this is how collusion works at corporations, um, and this I've used this example years ago when I was talking about Richie Daly, uh, mayor of the city of Chicago. Richard Daly would never tell someone 
I would like this package taken to Milwaukee in one, uh, and I like it there in one hour. He would never tell you to exceed the speed limit. He would just leave it to you to figure out what to do. And if you got caught, he never said to do it. And if you didn't get caught, you get rewarded. So, and everyone knows what it means. Of course, it means break the law. Of course, it means break the law. But it means break the law and don't get caught. That's how Donald Trump, whose entire family uh, business is one vast criminal empire, operates. No one's ever going to tell you um, to please put down in writing, here's how we will collude with Vladimir Putin to steal emails and win the election for our boss. That's not how it works. Everyone just understands what's supposed to happen. And they go out and do it. So everybody wants... Uh, everybody knows Trump's going to shit himself if he sees McCain's name anywhere, so they hide a tire, an entire mm-hmm. aircraft mm-hmm. carrier. Everyone knows Donald Trump owes the Russians money, has got Putin's hand up his ass, and that Putin has access to Hillary Clinton's emails thanks to WikiLeaks. We don't need to, the, in writing, what the plan is. Everyone knows what the fucking plan is. What idiot writes this shit down? Because that, that shit could end up in court. So that's how collusion works. Everyone around him just knows how what crimes needed to be done and how they need to be done and don't break the 11th command which is don't get caught except now the boss has the Mm -hmm. part uh, the power Mm -hmm. of the pardon so now they all get cocky now bill barr can just sit there in front of a roaring fire and talk about the craziest conspiracy theories in the world uh in the sure and certain knowledge that he's never going to go to prison he's never going to suffer a day in his life he's never going to miss a paycheck he can go full fucking maga and talk about how basically uh the russian thing is basically the liberal version Yep, and the CBS News reporter asked him, well, what about your legacy? Oh, we all die. I'm not looking for people to sing about me after I'm yeah, dead. We all die. What do I care? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like Frankie Five Angels, <laughs> which will take care of my family, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, your family. family's your family to take care of. <laughs> uh, well, then, you, you know, uh, the, the FBI probably did try to stage an illegal coup right. to overthrow no, the... Yeah. To, to, yeah. No, the fuck they didn't, and, and they work for you. What the hell? But that's why these people are so cocky, because... Yeah. Yeah. Al Capone is now the judge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can do whatever the fuck he and wants. And so Mitch McConnell and, uh, can just tell an audience, "I'm sipping my tea and telling you, I'd put I'd put a Supreme Court justice on the board a day before yeah. Donald Trump left office." You betcha. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I fuck. I don't have a principles. I have no principles. Yeah. And and all of you know it. Yeah. This is and this, this is, is a hot line at a fundraising dinner. Right. 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 And, and everyone, again, these are the things that make us who don't live in the little sandbag castles um, have to deal with every day. Everybody inside the bubble knows Mitch McConnell is a lying ghoul, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. fucking conscienceless throwback to the Confederacy, a racist backstabbing scumbag. Everyone knows it and no one says it. They just, they, they ask a lot of rhetorical questions. What could he be thinking? How could he possibly say this? Well, you know the answer to all of those questions. But the fact that you keep repeating them over and over again, as if this is all a surprise to us, we had no idea Mitch McConnell was this way, is so insulting to our intelligence, is so degrading to your own fucking profession. Well, and Drift Glass, let's be clear. One of the things that's gotten me really upset this week is... yes. It's it's like that commercial that that we see have seen way too many times. This is a real commercial, not a fake sponsor, by the way. Real, you real, that. real commercial, <laughs> a real commercial that insurance commercial uh-huh. where the guy is on FaceTime with his doorbell. I guess right. it is. Yeah. He sees the person at his door. Hi, I'm here to steal your car. What? No, really, I'm going to take this flag and smash in your car window and steal your car. What? Mm-hmm. And. This thing with Mueller appearing and saying everything that was we'd already re- I had already read in his yes. report. He didn't yeah. say anything from the podium that anyone who had read his report or read the summaries of his report in the newspapers, not right. the bar summary, but the actual summaries. Right. Nothing that Mueller said this week was original to no. to, to this week. He it was no. all out there before. Yep. And the reaction of certain people in in conservative media it really did pop a bubble in conservative media. I mean, uh, even some right wing blogs were saying, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, you know, Mueller is actually saying there was a crime committed. There mm-hmm. is an underlying crime to the obstruction. This is a shock to them. There was a woman at the Justin Amash 
right. I believe Rally saying, uh, I didn't have any idea. I, you know, I watch, I, I pretty much watch conservative media and I didn't know any of this. Right. And I'll have I didn't to know study there was it more. anything negative in the Mueller report right. about Donald Trump. I, I'll have to study it more. Now, right. I have a feeling the way she's going to study it more is by crawling further up Sean Hannity's ass <laughs> and, 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 and waiting for him to come back with reassuring lies because that's how Republicans well, operate. And that's this, what they do. this is why, you know, to his credit, Bill Kristol's anti-Trump Republican group is handing a copy of the Mueller report to every Republican member of Congress, including right. the Senate. Mm-hmm. They're, they're walking around saying, here, now you have it. No excuse. You have to read it. And it's not just a bubble of not wanting to know or the conservative media bubble not telling you the truth there's a bubble against reading yes there <laughs> there's is. a bubble we, against reading about it reading oh, it's anything, 400 frankly. pages i'll just listen to what sean hannity says right. and no or or mm-hmm. i mean william barr the most of the media believed william barr's summary was yes. true yes oh d- <laughs> David Brooks, uh, you yes. might have heard of him. I mentioned him once or twice. Uh, <laughs> got out, got out ahead of that curve, and was like, "Now I guess you all better apologize because yeah. neener, neener, neener." Yeah, and he never walked it back when it turned out Bill Barr was lying because Bill Barr was a member. I mean, if anyone else, I, I just have a picture of that roaring fire that Bill Barr is sitting in front of. I have a picture of him and David Brooks sharing the same uh, photogenic hound dog. Yeah, you know, uh, and I a name that Charlie. Moral yeah. hazard. Yes, he's the he's the um, he's the dog that David Brooks rents for uh, photographic purposes uh, that Charlie Pierce invented. So bless Charlie Pierce's heart. But I have a, it's it's the same it's the same set. It's the same TV set. They're they're of the same club. They're of the same class. They go to the same restaurants. They enjoy the same privileges. So of course Bill Barr must be right. He's an institutionalist for God's sake. Look at his hair. Look at his face. He's clean shaven. He looks a lot like me. He's old, he's white, he's a Republican, and he, he doesn't swear, and so you can trust him. And when it turned out, no, he's just a fucking liar. He's a fucking liar who who is beginning to look more and more like Steve Bannon. Right. Um, but, the, and the answer from David Brooks was, just move on. Yeah. <laughs> just pretend no, I right. never wrote the column I wrote a week ago. Right. And But right. you're absolutely right. The reaction from people in the media who should fucking well know better, who right. had that football pulled out from, from in front of them a hundred times. They're like, no, well, I guess it's and over. they're watching... You know, they're watching Robert Mueller on their phones and going, what? And what? Like, Don't you what? understand this information came out weeks ago? Yeah. Your car what? has been stripped for parts already. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your car. Yeah, exactly. You were saying right? this earlier. Your car is gone already. This is not a yeah. real time recording. This is not a real time recording. You could have recording. read this shit. <laughs> and, and this is a, this is the, the, the madness uh, uh, person who used to teach college. This is the frustration of someone who who is clear the class did not do the assigned reading. Right, right. That was on like, last night too. I, I assigned you yeah. chapters twenty four and twenty five. Anybody read and they go that sort of like if I, if I have my hand half in the air, I can yeah. still take it back if you call on me, right? Because right. I was just reading for my peanuts. Right. Um. And no, no, nobody did the reading. Nobody did the fucking reading. Nobody did anything because nobody reads anymore because that's just too hard. And I listened to a good chunk of the Mueller report on Audible because it's free uh, uh-huh. to Audible members. You can just go click and on it. Did you get the um, the Gilbert Gottfried version? No, that I didn't version, get I the Gilbert just... Gottfried version. It's, writ- it's read okay. by very boring uh, enunciating narrators. Uh, it's uh-huh. now on YouTube. The um, the uh, I think it's Vice oh, Carl News. Carl Reiner's doing something. Vice News. Yeah, Carl Reiner and, mm-hmm. uh, is now doing – not Carl Reiner, Rob Reiner. Rob Reiner, I'm sorry. Rob well, Reiner, Reiner is now yeah. going to do a show of, uh, you know, excerpts of it. But right. I listened to a chunk of it. And the thing that I came away with was, wow, Don Jr. is guilty as hell, number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of yes, everything, of yeah. lying to Congress, mm-hmm. of lying to the FBI, of covering up, and of uh, colluding with the Russians, of actually seeking out Russian help for mm-hmm. the election. That it, that was already in the emails we saw that uh, his emails say, yes, yeah, so I'd really love to have this help. And uh, there's also a, a clear indication that the Trump organization as a campaign didn't think that they would be accountable for anything. Right. Number one, because they thought they were going to lose. Number two, because as long as they had WikiLeaks and Roger Stone do it for them, They weren't guilty of anything. And Roger Stone's Mm -hmm. an expert at dirty politics and getting away with it since Nixon. So we'll just have him do it. 
and we our hands are clean. And because so, they knew the emails were stolen, right? I mean, de- at some level, they understood that they were dealing with stolen emails. Right. But Roger Stone's getting them for us, so it's okay. And that, yeah, those, we have a bag man. We, we have, have a bag, bag man, man doing right, yeah. right. So uh, that there, that's in the report that you get that sense that they are not going to be held accountable because Roger Stone's doing it. Right. And uh, <laughs> if you had done just as much, taken as much time out of your month as I have, which isn't much, you'd come away with that, and you'd know Barr was lying. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we did a podcast called "The Cover Up in Plain Sight," and that's what Barr did. Yes. The surprise that people, in the, particularly on the right, but in general, have of what? Yeah. <laughs> what our our democracy has been interfered with? What is infuriating to those of us that pay attention? It it really it is, and I include and, everyone listening to this because of the seven to ten thousand people who listen to this podcast, you guys are paying attention. Yes, I, you are. I and appreciate that about you. It makes me feel less alone. Uh, this is why I um, gave up on school. I did give up on learning, but I gave up on school uh, sometime when, after my sophomore year of high school because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I had it had been coming on for a long time. I finished everything. I went to college, but it was the the class slows down to accommodate the most recalcitrant and unprepared students. Right. And that's true of our whole democracy. Yeah. Yep. The rest of us are twiddling our thumbs waiting. You know, we've already read nine chapters ahead. Well, you know, just uh, watch well, a film or Nancy something. Nancy Pelosi is waiting for that very, very slow person watching mm-hmm. The Bachelor <laughs> <laughs> to realize um, something's wrong. And the fact is, that's the person who called the local TV station to complain Mm-hmm. Because her bachelor show was interrupted by a tornado in her town. Mm-hmm. Did you see that clip? <laughs> no, but I absolutely believe it. The weatherman, yeah. uh-huh. the weatherman chewed out his audience. I'm not sure whether he was fired or not, but well, I... he he was furious with his audience. He said, "Stop calling the station and telling us to put the bachelor back on. There's a yeah. tornado that's going to hit your house." Yeah. Then and again, this is not about my ego. I don't want to hear it that you think this is about my ego. This is the weather map showing the tornadoes and where they are. And I have a responsibility to break into your entertainment and show you that you are in danger. This is about safety. And he really was at furious. He said, I'm yeah. sorry I had to do that, but I'm tired of people calling in and complaining that their show was interrupted when uh, we're under threat here from immediate weather conditions the whole concept of a b arc is looking more and more <laughs> you know like no, a tornado is going to hit your house yeah but i want to be watching the bachelorette good, when that tornado good, stay, hits <laughs> stay above ground stay near uh, it, uh, it, it, in a room full of a lot of windows um and just stay really just and you're gonna hear rororing sound that's just the audience that's approving the, the audience choice approving your show choice yeah. yay i'm 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 a popular person i'm i i hang with the crowd I'm with the mob. I'm live and, tweeting it. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you live tweet the tornado that's suddenly... going to hit your... <laughs> the number of people that ran outside in Texas to take a picture of the tornado mm-hmm. as it's going by. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at that. And then suddenly <laughs> their, Twitter stream, their Twitter stream was suddenly interrupted by Charles Darwin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm firmly convinced that if I just took it upon myself to read the entire Mueller report in the voice of Batman, I think I could get <laughs> in late July, 2016, <laughs> soon after WikiLeaks first released the stolen documents, a foreign government. And then about third paragraph, my voice would go, but yeah, still, you, yeah. I think we get Christian Bale to read the whole thing as Batman. Um, you well, get, I think that's what you know, Rob Reiner's going to do. I think he's going to get, make it entertaining. You know, and yeah. that's something that even Robert Mueller isn't able to do. Yeah. God bless him. Well, He's you know, not, his delivery is not, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not going to catch I, the uh, bachelorette crowd. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of, uh, of uh, Sullivan's travels. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I want to make a, I want to make a movie with hot and soul and expose, but with a little bit of sex. A little yes, sex. A little bit yes. of sex. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. You, and honest to God, when I worked in government, um, when I, when I worked, anywhere advising anyone on anything it was maddening to me the number of people whose plans for how they're going to roll out their product or or yeah. improve what they're going to do or get their story out or get people to think is okay step one we're going to completely change human nature yep 
yep. so that everyone will pay close attention to my boring bullshit PowerPoint that's 37 slides long. No, and then they won't. like, no, you're already dead. You're already dead. <laughs> you're gonna get five, you're gonna get five slides. And you it's like it's like the big short. You have a blonde who's naked in a bubble bath reading right. you the information. Exactly. That's, that's what that's, we need, right? That's how you do it. That's exactly how you oh, do look, it. She- She's going to shift her body a little bit. You might get a little peek. Mm-hmm. Ooh, <laughs> no, oh, what did you say gonna, about? Now she's going to tell you about WikiLeaks, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. What did you say about uh, 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 debt obligations or or whatever? <laughs> see, I see. I even remember part of the language because of the what naked blonde lady, <laughs> right? Because mm-hmm. you had your full attention. She did. Hey, while we're talking about entertainment, uh-huh. uh, there's a couple pieces of entertainment that I would like to recommend to our listeners. Okay. One is the movie Booksmart. I took my two teenage daughters to see Booksmart this week. And uh, at the end of the movie, while the credits were rolling, my 16, she'll be 17 in July, Mm -hmm. daughter pulled out her phone and was sending a text. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm texting my best friend and telling her she can never leave me. (laughs) (laughs) Because this is a movie about female friendship. And... Uh Uh, it is so moving and so funny and so entertaining. It's so well directed and there's so much in it. It's all on the screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I would see it again. It's, it's that and good. And my wife has really, really exquisite taste in movies. Well, I, this uh-huh. one is, is remarkable. Uh, and then the other thing is there is a, there's, there's a million stand up. uh, routines and stand-up shows on netflix but there's a new one by wanda sykes which she's very funny yeah uh this one is very political and a lot about trump a lot about uh our entertainment system and and some of the things we've been talking about on this podcast uh a lot about she mentions the women's march she mentions all kinds of things aging uh, it's it's a good show, but the first twenty five minutes of it are really political. And so, if you're a political junkie like we are, and I assume you are, uh, I think the Wanda Sykes uh, Netflix special you'd enjoy that. But let's talk about those the progress that Illinois is making. The Illinois state legislature here in Illinois is on the verge of passing marijuana legalization, uh, expanding abortion access, and passing a progressive tax code. This legislative session, which is more than they've done in one session, than they've done the last five. Uh, and this is all thanks to having a Democratic majority, frankly, and a Democratic governor. Right. And uh, uh, how much of that's going to get signed today, I don't know. Maybe none, maybe some. We have a, a sort of, we have a legislative session, then a veto session, and the end of the legislative session is today. So we'll see. But elections really do have consequences. Right. And then in Chicago, uh, uh, Lori Lightfoot, the new mayor of Chicago, uh, has come down hard on uh, Ed, Eddie Burke. Um, Ed Burke was indicted. Ed Burke's an alderman. Ed Burke is a racist asshole, a uh, longest serving or second longest serving alderman in Chicago. He was part of the Verdoliac re- rebellion that rose up against Harold Washington because Harold Washington was black. No other reason he was black and they hated him for it. And they rose up against him and brought the city to a halt for many years. Um, he's being indicted and the new mayor of Chicago's good. <laughs> Screw him. And anybody who looks like him should go to jail. Not everyone who looks like him, but anyone involved in this is going to is going to get hurt. Any any contractors who had anything to do with this is going to get mud splashed on them. I want this whole shit cleaned up. And this is a long time coming. This would never have happened with Richie Daly as mayor. It never would have happened, honest to God, with Rahm Emanuel as mayor. Um, elections truly do have consequences, and there are very interesting things happening in this state at this time that are happening literally miles from our home. Uh, but that's what's happening right here where we live. Yep, elections matter. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Truman and his $30 cat bed. He has a very, very <laughs> nice $30 cat bed. And in this picture, he's sleeping in a cardboard box next to the $30 cat bed. <laughs> Isn't that just perfect? The boxes are the best. Gifts are entirely secondary, but boxes are yeah, the best. You know, I, I I love my cat bed so much. I'm going to sleep in the box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and of course, Truman prefers our fake sponsor, freshly poured cat food. We had a listener named Robert who wrote us this week to say, I wanted to share this with you. I was listening to Rachel Maddow and my eight-year-old daughter asked me, 
when is she going to start singing Freshly Poured? <laughs> <laughs> We're winning, Blue Gal. We're May winning. Day. Thank you for writing. Absolutely made our day. Absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So remember, whether you buy pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. You can visit Truman at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Uh, tomorrow is the first of the month. If you're getting a paycheck this week, uh, remember, we don't get a paycheck unless we hear from you with a donation. So we appreciate it very, very much. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you very much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties want to remind everyone that June is Spay and Neuter Your Republican Month. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2018.